All right, welcome everybody. Welcome to those who have joined us on Zoom to the Mitch and Maley live call. Welcome also to those who are joining us on YouTube Live. We are so excited today. We have the most awesome guest speaker that, that we have ever had on this call. And I am just so stoked uh, to bring Woody out and, and have him share his immense knowledge with you tonight. Um, we have a couple of uh, we have a couple of announcements as we're diving into this. Just a few things we want to make you aware of, uh, and it's only going to take a second because we really want just you know we want to just let Woody kind of do his thing. So Give it all the That's um, right. yeah, so let's just pull up this slide real quick. So um, for those of you who are part of our Renatus education, we have our Renatus regional conference coming up. It's going to be in Salt Lake City on November eighth through the tenth. Uh, and it's time to register. You can register in the back office. Um, this is going to be awesome. Our guest speaker tonight, Woody, uh, is going to be one of the keynote speakers in the in the regional event, as well as a litany of other hyper qualified, amazing individuals. Bob Snyder is going to be there and sharing his vast knowledge with us. Um, so you're not going to want to miss it. If if you want more information, uh, if you're not sure how to register for this, um, then reach out to me and we'll get you registered. It is so for the first. Um, for the first hundred people who register, uh, I believe it's 295, and then the price goes up from there. Um, there are so if you're in the group of the first hundred people that register for the the um, the event, um, there's you know there's some additional value that you're going to be getting, and then the second tier, the next group of 200 people are going to get some you know a, a little less value, and so on and so forth. Um, so you'll want to jump on and register as soon as possible. Uh, it does cost. This is a paid event. Um, you know, but it's 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 done out. So you're gonna want to attend. There are going to be major, you know, Renatus and and you know just general real estate investor like gurus from around the country. They're gonna be coming and be talking to us. So you're not gonna want to miss it. Um, there's gonna be an awesome banquet as part of it that we're gonna you know be able to kind of get together and have an award ceremony and party a little it's bit. A gala, so, guys. You get, it's a gala. you get to get all dressed up. I mean, that's what it is, right? It's a chance right. to make mingle and feels beautiful and hang out with investors it is absolutely one of those things you have to be at and as bob always says it's where you take your business from your mind to your heart yep and it really does transform how you do your business so make sure you're there i will be there it's true don't want to miss it right. okay yeah. all right so guys uh like i've said you know as as we've been preparing for this week um woody woodward is on the call with us and guys, seriously, you, you're gonna walk away from this like mind exploded because of the information he has to share with you today. I had the privilege, Woody, now let me tell you something about Woody. Woody and I became instant friends, like instant best friends. It's like that scene from uh, Step Brothers, right? Did we just become best friends? <laughs> yup. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> like that's me and Woody, right? That's our relationship. So, um, you know, and, and I got to see, um, you know, Woody obviously already had a, a well-established program in the Emotional Fingerprint, um, but I got to watch as he developed this incredible drive system that evolved out of the Emotional Fingerprint, and and you guys are, are you know, are going to be the recipients of that incredible knowledge tonight. So, um, guys, I'm not going to steal any of his thunder. He's got an incredible, I mean, he's a best-selling author. He's got, I don't know, a, a million and a half books um, that are all bestsellers and, you know, all do incredible things. Um, he's done everything. I mean, I was there the day that his Ferrari was delivered to his house. Um, so that was fun. Uh, you know, there's just there's just so many amazing things I could say about Woody, but it would take the entire call. So I am not going to steal his thunder. I am going to turn the time over here to to Woody right away. Um, so Woody, why don't you come out and, uh, and tell us a little bit about yourself and share with us the amazing stuff that you have to share today. Ah, uh, you're so wonderful, Mitch and Maylee. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm so grateful. I'm going to skip any introduction to me because honestly, I'm not cool at all, but what I share will be life changing. So I'd rather just jump in head first. So let's look at what is the true predictability of real estate. And we're going to play a game. I want you to choose a number between one and 10. So on a piece of paper or in your mind, pick a number between one and 10. Okay. Now double that number, simple math, pick a number between one and 10, double that number, add six to that number, divide that number in half, subtract your original number that you chose, 
The count of two, say your number. One, two, three. If you all did this playing along, you did it right, you'll get a three every single time. It's just a simple math equation. But what it shows you is you can stack the sales odds in your favor. If you're into real estate, if you're into learning how to grow your mind, grow your mindset, grow your business, there are certain techniques and certain attributes that if you do consistently and all the time, it's as easily as predictable as choosing the number three. One of my favorite stories is of two friends who went for a drive, Walter and Arthur. Walter was a visionary. He loved what he did. He was very passionate about who he was and his creativity. And he got Arthur out there and had this great real estate deal. He said, hey, I bought all this land. I'm going to build my dreams here. I want you to buy all the surrounding property. It's going to double in value. Arthur looked around. He's like, there's not a freeway. There's not an exit. I mean, we got jackrabbits and orchards out here. No one's coming out here. But Walter kept pressing. No, you, you don't understand. I'm going to build my dream. It's going to be amazing. Like we've all had friends like that. who try to encourage us to take action. And Arthur just kept giving excuse after excuse. You know, money's tight. My wife is not going to be into this. I just don't think we should do it. Well, one year later, Walt Disney opened up Disneyland and Art Linkletter had the right to buy all the surrounding property and he missed it. So whose fault is it that he missed that opportunity? In my opinion, I think it's Walt's fault. Walt did not speak a language that Art understood. So what happened is, this happens all the time when we're dealing with real estate or any type of sell. We start conveying and talking to people based on our language and not their language. Now, inter interesting enough, the Fujisai family saw the opportunity. They bought uh, 55 acres surrounding Disneyland for $2,300 in 1994. I'm sorry, 1954. At the end of the century, they sold it back to the Disney Corporation for just under $100 million. That is a serious ROI, simply because they understood and they saw the value. So what drives human behavior? I'm fascinated with human behavior, what drives us, what moves us. I've written 42 books. I've made three movies, three infomercials. As Mitch and Mailey were saying, I've done a lot of really weird stuff in my career, all in the pursuit of trying to understand what motivates us, what pushes us forward. And in this process, I've developed something called the drive system, D-R-I-V-E, and it's what uh, motivates you and inspires you. So I'm gonna have you discover your drive right now and I want you to play along at home because honestly, if you play along now, the rest of this presentation is gonna be very interactive and really fun. So we'll take about five minutes to do this. Get a pen and paper if you need it or text it to yourself on the phone or even in the comments, just put it in the comments, in the chat. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna read each one of these cards first, then read them again and put them in order of what makes you feel important. Not what's important to you, what makes you feel important. So for example, work can be important to you. Work may not make you feel important. Family can be important to you. Family may not make you feel important. Doesn't mean you're a bad sibling, parent, spouse, whatever. But what we're trying to do is identify of these keywords on each one of these sheets, which one has the most amount of words that makes you feel important, where you feel connected to yourself on top of the world. I'm gonna take about five minutes and set a little timer. I'm not going to speak. I just want you to think about it. Write just the letter down, the D, the R, the I, the V, the E, in whichever order you want to do it. If you have your phone handy, take a screenshot of this. You'll want to be able to use this later. Sometimes if you get stuck between which one to decide, Ask yourself, which one could you not live without? Your subconscious mind will say it instantly what it is and just go with that.
A lot of you guys have already put your drive in the chat. That's great. Give another two more minutes for those of you who are joining right now. <clears throat> put them in order on what makes you feel important, not what is important to you. <clears throat> Woody, if you could repeat the instructions, we've actually had a few people join during this time that we're doing this, this exercise. Perfect. Yeah, so for those of you who are joining right now, what you're trying to identify is what is your drive? What motivates, inspires you? Uh, I've written a bunch of books and I've learned how to identify those key factors that really inspire us and move us in the right direction. So what you'll do is you'll read each card first, read them a second time, and put them in order of which card has the most amount of words on it that makes you feel important. Now, what's important to you? What makes you feel important? What makes you feel connected on top of the world? That's defined as a feeling of importance. So if you look at the left-hand side of the example, just put the initials into the chat. We'll take about another two more minutes because from here on out, it gets super interactive and super fun. So please go ahead and put your drive in the chat. Once again, if you get stuck between which one to decide, ask yourself, which one could you not live without? And your subconscious mind will tell you, go with that one. Oh, this is good. I'm getting, the, I, I'm just, just watching the chat. I'm getting to know a lot more of you. <laughs> even, I have those more intimately. Thing. I'm, I'm, I'm I, looking at the chat right I'm now. I'm looking at it. I'm like, oh, that, that makes sense. Yep. Yep. I love it. All right, I'll give about one more minute for those who just started. Select which card makes you feel the most important. All right, we're gonna wrap it up, but go ahead and if you wanna take a screenshot really quick so you can share this with your friends or family or just for yourself later, go ahead and then I'm gonna go on to the next slide. All right, so if you selected the D as your primary, these are your motivators. This is what you're inspired by. This is where you, what you secretly desire. You love an enhanced lifestyle. You love a clear vision of financial and time freedom, and you enjoy VIP experience. If that's accurate for you, please go ahead in the chat and hit a yes. Um, I'm a director. I'm all about lifestyle fun. You'll notice in the background, my office is decorated with Legos and pineapples and statues and just all kinds of fun things. If you're the R, that stands for relator. You're motivated by consulting with other people, having a family influence, and you love to give back. If that resonates with you, please go ahead and drop a yes in the chat. Intellectuals, all about the details. Show me the back office. I want to see the iOS system. You love step-by-step -step actions on how to succeed. You want to enhance your intelligence and your expertise. If you're a validator, you're motivated by the attention and focus that you give and receive from other people. When you're considering buying a product, how does this product make you look better? And you'd love to have your um, accomplishments highlighted. If that's accurate, go ahead and hit a yes in the uh, chat. Executives, you're the show me the money. You want proof that it works. You love third-party testimonials and you focus on the big picture. So let's go on an even deeper level. If you will, uh, on, when I get to your drive, what I want you to do is close your eyes. I want you to visualize what I'm saying and see if it resonates with you. And then if it does, go ahead in the chat and hit a yes. And the reason why, by the way, I'm having you go into the chat is there's going to be a pattern I want you to see. Because as soon as you see this pattern, you'll never not see it again. So if you're a director, go ahead and close your eyes. They enjoy a good challenge and love to feel free and independent. They thrive on being creative, discovering new things, and experiencing life. They are great in social settings and putting together a variety of people and making, uh, making something happen. They find joy in overcoming their obstacles and making a difference in the world. So if that resonates with you as a director, go ahead and hit yes in the chat. For our relators, same thing, close your eyes. They know how to build strong, long-term, healthy relationships. 
In the workplace, their strength is in networking and building other people up to a higher level of productivity. They garner energy and security through their relationships. They are loyal to their friends and are service-minded. So if that is you, please say yes. Our intellectuals, they are stimulated intellectually either through books, speeches, research, conversations, or organization. Success comes when they accomplish a task. They'd rather be learning something new than just lying around. They are driven to understand and be more knowledgeable. They like to share what they know with others. So if that represents you as well, please go ahead and hit a yes in the chat. Our validators, close your eyes. They enjoy intimate, small groups of people where they're being validated. Often they are wonderful at giving validation to others. Their confidence stems from the strength of their relationships. If they feel they are in a healthy, caring, and trusted relationship, they feel strong, secure, and loved. Uh, our executives, go ahead and close your eyes. They are productive and thrive on getting the job done task-oriented, and focus on getting results. They do not like small talk and would prefer tackling a project rather than sitting around wasting time. They are happiest when they are pursuing or achieving a desired goal. So if that represents you, go ahead in the chat and hit a yes. So this is the drive cell system. Directors are motivated by lifestyle. Relators are motivated by community. Intellectuals are looking for a system. Validators are uh, looking for admiration. And executives are looking for proof. So let's now go in the chat. Notice if you go in there, it's a unanimous yes. In less than five minutes, we just discovered all humanity. We understood instantly how every one of us thinks, acts, shows up, speaks, talks, the whole bit. But I'm going to go even deeper and show you how it really uh, comes into your life, your business, and your real estate investments. So let's say the Shark Tank. We have all, you know, if you're entrepreneurial minded, you're on this call because you love real estate, you love business, you love that way. Things are happening and Shark Tank's the best. So when I discovered Drive, I was looking for case studies and I wanted to figure out what's the best case study that has all drives represented. So for a director is Robert. He's all about his cars, his house. He was on Dancing with the Stars, ended up marrying his dancing partner from Dancing with the Stars. So he's a director. He's motivated by lifestyle. Lori, she is the mother bear. She's the community relator, all about helping other people lifting your product up, making it become a huge success on uh, different TV shows. Damon John, he's the intellect. If you've ever watched the show, he'll be the first one to say, where's your patent? So he's looking for a system. What's your manufacturing? Who's your doing your distribution? He's very systematized. Mark Cuban, he's the validator. He's all about admiration, giving and receiving, cheering people on, loving on people, uh, respecting them, wanting them to be successful. And not least but last, we have Kevin O'Leary. He's the executive. He's Mr. Wonderful. He's always about show me the money. He'll say, you know, your numbers are horrible. You're dead to me. I, my money is my little soldiers that go out and work at night. He's just really driven about proof. So once again, directors are lifestyle, related to community, intellectuals are looking for a system, validators are ad admiration, and executives are proof. So when it comes to sales, whether you're doing a real estate transaction or you're using it in your normal business, it's called the 2080 rule. You accidentally lose 80% of all your sales based on your drive. Think about Walt Disney again. He's a director. If you've ever been to Disneyland, you know the pattern where it's a big circle. You go to the center of the hub where the castle is, and it shoots off into different lands. You got Tomorrowland, Frontierland. Now they got Star Wars land. He built the entire thing based on his drive, wanting other people to experience lifestyles. But Art Linkletter, he had his own TV show and his own radio show. He was a validator. He didn't care about buying the real estate. He would have been more impressed if Walt would have said, hey, buy this real estate and I'll put your name on the castle. He would have done it in a heartbeat as a validator. But here's what happens with that 2080 rule. If you're a director, you're thinking, oh, everybody's just like me. So there's five drives, you speak one, you alienate the other four. Well, if you learn to speak their other drives, you can actually increase your sales, uh, sales potential by 400%. Let's take the 80-20 rule and look at Shark Tank. So I love that old phrase, you know, put your money where your mouth is. If you look at that transaction where 20% is the closing ratio on average, if you look at Robert, he's he's been pitched 511 times, which is no small amount. That's enormous. But he's only been closed 
but he does put his money where his mouth is. His largest investment was into zero pol uh, pollution motors, which is this uh, kind of like oversized golf cart for electric cars. And but it really is uh, air compressed. And so what he wants to do is change the world. He, his whole thing about his drive is lifestyle. So he put five million dollars into that. You got Lori closing her ratio only twenty percent. Been pitched three hundred eleven times, but her largest investment was six hundred thousand dollars into Ruffle Butts. Now I had to Google that. I was not sure what I was going to get, but it's a kids clothing line. So it's all about. You know, our children are our future. So as a relator, she is going to invest in anything that can help kids and community. Damon John again, 15% closing ratio, pitched 407 times, but only closed 61 deals. His largest investment was a half million into Hell's Bells helmets. So think if you were going to manufacture a helmet, you've got to deal with DOT, government approval, safety inspection, you need a guy or a gal who's all about systems. And that's where he put his money. Mark Cuban, I, I put his in green because he's been pitched the second to least amount of time, but he's done the most amount of deals at 85. Why? As a validator, he wants to validate other people. Validators are phenomenal at validating and lifting other people up. They want others to be successful. They cheer them on. Mitch is a validator. He's all about lifting and growing and helping other people achieve the same. His largest deal was $2 million into 1031 productions. I had to look that one up as well. It's a party company. So Mr. Validator, to be the life of the party, invested $2 million into a party company. Kevin O'Leary has done the most amount of pitches, but has done the least amount of deals. Why? Executives want proof. He's the hardest one to sell because he wants the proof. But he put his largest investment into Zips. If you're not familiar with Zips, you may have seen it though without knowing. It's the individual wine glasses that have that film that you zip off. So they come to have the patent for the individual wine glasses is what he invested in. So if you think through all of human history, what's the most profitable companies out there? It's got to be liquor and spirits, right? That's where as an executive wanting proof, that's where he put his money. So as soon as you understand drive, you have the potential to increase your sales by 400%. Has anyone ever closed all the sharks? The answer is yes, but it took five seasons. It was five seasons and it was episode two. Charles Michael Yin had this product called Breathometer. Not a real sexy product, but you plug it in the back of your phone, you blow into it, tells you whether or not you're intoxicated. It'll order you a Lyft or an Uber, which is, you know, very great, but not super fun. What he did, though, and you can actually go onto YouTube and watch it, without even knowing drive, he subconsciously answered every one of these individuals based on their drive. They got so heated that Kevin, the executive wanting proof, kicked him out of the shark tank. He said, hey, you need to leave. We're going to negotiate. And the five of them negotiated together, came back and gave him a million dollars, a 400% increase when he was only asking for 250 grand. So once again, that 2080 rule, you understand the benefits of your product, you tie them to each drive and you will absolutely find the sale. So let's transition to marketing. All marketing is a reassociation. And a reassociation is easily understood because you've done it your whole life without even knowing it. Have you ever been sound asleep? You hear a thud in the middle of the night. I don't care if you're a grown man or you are scared to death. You muster up enough courage. You get out of bed. You look through the window and all of a sudden you see a dog rummaging through the garbage can. Your mind creates a reassociation. It relabels the meaning of that noise. You go back to sleep like it's no big deal. So marketing, the whole point of marketing is to create reassociations for people, to create new meaning. Think about this. If I were to tell you diamonds are a... Most likely, you're going to say a girl's best friend. That ad was from De Beers with Marilyn Monroe. They did a movie on it. The other one is a diamond is forever. Another thing by De Beers. In the 1980s, there was Where's the Beef by Wendy's. The funny thing about Where's the Beef is Wendy's has a rectangular or squared hamburger on a round bun. It doesn't have more meat. It just pops out past the bun. So people thought, oh, where's the beef? It's at Wendy's. That simple reassociation increased their sales by 31%. Breakfast of champions. I guarantee you there's not a champion in the world who's eating Wheaties before they go on court. 
M&Ms melt in your mouth, not in your hand. All reassociations. So when you think about selling to people, it's always about what's in it for them. They, they have to get something out of it. So often when we're sharing a message, a concept, an idea, we're so selfishly driven because we're based on our drive and not theirs that we forget to love on them and give them what they really, really need. The sell will not happen until a reassociation occurs. So you will never sell anybody anything ever in your life unless you create so much value for them that they need or want your product more than they want that money sitting in the bank or on their credit card. You get compensated in direct proportion to the problems you solve. Uh, Larry Branch, who's the, or oh, what, I just forgot his last name. I think it's Larry Branch, who's the founder, co founder of Google. He said it's easy to be a billionaire, just solve a $10 billion problem. So we get paid based off the problems we solve. So let's look at Michael Jordan. Some consider him the GOAT. He was rookie of the year, six times finals MVP, nine times all defensive, 11 times all NBA. 14 times All-Star, played in 1,078 games, scored 32,292 points in his career, has six champion rings, and he's only made $90 million. Now, I say only, that's still a lot of money, right? Well, in 2019, Nike paid him $134 million in royalties alone. So here's a guy who didn't have to lace up his shoes, didn't have the go out and break a sweat, didn't have to hurt or trash his body and made a ton more money simply because of his royalties. Why would Nike pay him 134 million? Because he's 10% of the $3. billion dollars that Nike sells. So he solves a massive problem for Nike. He brings in $3.2 billion. His career earnings were only 90 million on the court, but his corporate sponsors are 1.7 billion. Take Sarah Blakely, inventor of Spanx. She started at $5,000 in her basement and ended up selling over two, uh, 20 million pairs, making her a billionaire. Solved 20 million problems for people. So when you think about your message, you think about selling real estate, you think about buying real estate education, you have to link it to your drive. How is having real estate, real estate education, going to solve the problems you have in your life? As soon as you have that reassociation, you'll be one of the best investors on the planet. So let's break down each of the drives and see what problems each one of them is solving and dealing with. So a director, and I want you to interact on this one again. If you are a director, you chose D as your first uh, drive. Would you agree that the challenges that you are facing, not all of them, but some of them are, that you don't feel free and independent, you aren't pursuing your life's purpose. You aren't experiencing the life that you want. So when you are challenged in your life, would you agree with those three statements? If you do, please hit yes in the chat. You're going to see another pattern here in a second. If you're a relator, you chose R for the first, <clears throat> for the drive, excuse me. <clears throat> when you have challenges, it's because you feel insecure in your relationships. You don't have the influence that you want, and you're exhausted from giving too much. So relators are always serving and always giving. And I noticed on here we had five or six relators. So would you agree that sometimes when you feel challenged, you feel exhausted, it's because of these three things. If it is, please hit yes in the chat. Intellectuals, you can't find the information that you need. You have what's called paralysis by analysis. You overlook, you overanalyze, and you don't feel or uh, you don't feel organized at times. So when you're feeling a challenge, this is what's happening. If you agree with that, hit a yes in the chat. For our validators, you get, like uh, relators, you get exhausted from serving too many people. You feel disrespected from the people, from the people they care about, not feeling recognized for their contribution. So with that as you as a validator, if you feel exhausted at times because of these three things, hit yes in the chat. And our executives, don't feel like you're in control when you feel challenged. You're not winning the way you want to in your business, your relationship, or your life. You feel overwhelmed from too many goals. So once again, if this is your drive, if you chose E for executive, and that is when you feel these challenges, you feel some of these emotions, go ahead and hit yes in the chat. And then let's go to the chat. Let's see here. Once again, unanimous. So 
as soon as you understand someone's drive, you understand what challenges they have. Well, that becomes very important when you decide to sell to someone. When I was writing the drive book, um, I had a pleasure to interview, uh, interview Ron Klein. He was the inventor of the magnetic strip on the back of a credit card. He said, Woody, I don't sell ideas. I sell benefits. And that's, that's never left me. I, I think about that all the time, that people are driven. They have a drive. They want to change their life. And if you sell them the benefits on how to do that, they'll follow suit all the time. So if you're going to sell to a director, does your product help them feel free and independent? Does it help them overcome their challenges? Does it help them achieve their life's purpose? So if you're on this call and you're thinking, man, should I get into real estate? Should I invest in some real estate education? Well, let me ask you this. Does real estate education help you feel more free and independent? Will it help you overcome challenges? Will it help you achieve your life's purpose? I believe it will. I'm a director and I love real estate. I've been doing real estate for 25 years. If you're a relator, does your product support their community? Does it connect them to their loved ones? Does it make them look like a cheerleader in their community? If you're a relator, you want to get into real estate, think about how much real estate helps a community. I mean, you can't have a community without real estate. If you're an intellectual, do you have a clear step-by-step -step instructions? Does it save them time or money? Does it make their life easier? So if you once again, you're looking at buying an education system, it's perfect for an intellectual. For validators, does your product make them look like a rock star? Does it make them look, does it give them positive attention from people? Does it help them serve their teams? It totally does. When you get into a group and a community of people who give out awards, every, it seems like every single quarter to help you thrive and help you succeed in your community, it's beautiful. For an executive, same thing. Does your products or service give your client more control? Does it help them win? Does it make their goals easier to achieve? Once again, in real estate, it absolutely does. In real estate, you can win, have control, set goals, solve problems, work, thrive at the highest level possible. So drive plus whatever product your company gives or service equals the sell. I call this next thing niches to riches, where you advertise based on drive. So you think about your line of work, whatever you do, are your ads custom to each individual drive? Nature Made is a, a nutrition company. I'm sure you guys have seen these at Walmart and everywhere else. They have these simple ads that says, individuals lose sleep each night, costing them $315,000 of lost wages over their lifetime. Get sleep, get melatonin. Now, if you, if you know melatonin, it's, a, it's for everybody. That's not just for executives, but when you're talking about lost wages of $315,000, that is a niches to riches ad. That markets specifically to executives. If you want to hit intellectuals, Nature Bay's got one, pharmacist recommended. And if you look at the bottle, it's got, you know, 100% daily value of what you need. It's got the US, USP certified supplement approval. It's giving you all the intellectual importance that you need to make a decision to buy this product. But once again, it's a daily vitamin. Everyone needs a daily vitamin. This is where you actually combine ads. You can do relators and validator ads. You can do executive and director ads. But this one's targeted specifically for prenatal. Once again, if you're pregnant, it doesn't matter what your drive is. You need a prenatal vitamin. But here, they're going specific to relators and validators. So what did this do for them? Well, in 2019, it took their sales over a billion dollars simply by creating ads specific to each individual drive. So if you're going to go out there and market, directors are looking for lifestyle images. Relators want community images. Intellectuals are looking for systems. Validators want admiration. And executives want proof. So I'm going to give you kind of a visual cheat sheet, if you will. If you're marketing to a director, lifestyle, fun. If you're doing social media posts, same thing. Have videos, energetic things where people want to be in that life. Another version of dra uh, director as well. Relators are all about community, supporting, lifting other people up. Intellectuals, this one is a little bit harder in trying to find images for systems, things like that, but it's also about health, organization. Validators want to be admired, so you're showing things of people being accepted, being loved, being recognized, congratulating them. 
And executives are showing me the money. They want the proof, baby. Great for before and after. So if you're going to ever sell to an executive, show them the before and after the results. Here's some ads that I found that I wanted you to guess and kind of see how the drive shows up. So here you have a picture of everyone on the beach listening to a JBL speaker. It's hitting the lifestyle for director, hitting the community for relator, and definitely the she's, girls do a selfie, admiration. Everyone's at the beach having a good time. This is probably the best I've ever seen just from a visual. So it's Weight Watchers. You get the large door showing that you're going in heavy, exiting out a small door. So great for the intellectuals wanting system and executives who want proof. Florex wipes, obviously for everybody, but this one here is going for the trust on the validators, relators of the mom, the five stars are the proof that it works. <laughs> this one's by far my favorite one. If you're not familiar, uh, Durex is a condom company. So it's per se, okay, you can buy a baby seat for $217, or you can buy condoms for $2.50. Perfect for the proof of executive and lifestyle. Are you ready to have a baby or not? Another really great visual is for Hoover vacuums. For a product demo, break glass. We've all seen the movies like someone breaks glass and gets sucked out the window, right? So for executives, it's all about the proof. Intellectuals gives them the system. I'm going to wrap up on this and then I'm going to go for Q&A for you guys and answer any questions that you have. The golden rule states this, do unto others the way you would want to be done unto you. I believe that's selfish. I love the platinum rule. Do unto others the way they would want to be done unto. Meaning serve people based on their drive, not yours. So Mitch, I'm going to turn it back to you, brother. I'm going to hit stop, share. I appreciate the opportunity, but Q&A, whatever you guys want to discuss, I love going deep and I'm here to serve. Yeah, the time is yours, guys. Let's uh, let's open it up to questions and answers. Woody, that was awesome, man. And as, as you were going through that, like, I love, uh, I was kind of applying it to, to even negotiating real estate, you know? I mean, you know, you're negotiating with a director and you're trying to get them to, to sell you their house. It's like, dude, you're going to cash out $200,000 worth of equity. Take the family on a cruise, right? Or, uh, yeah, okay, you know, so you're here in Utah. I'm here in Utah. One of the biggest real estate agents here is Jimmy Rex, client mm -hmm. of mine. He did the same thing. In fact, he's in the book, The Drive Book. Talk about that. He goes, Woody, as soon as I know their drive, it is so easy to sell to them. If it's a relator, I talk about what's the next house? What kind of community do you want to live in? If it's the intellectual, what system? What are you looking for? It's so easy, but you have to be conscious. And where most people fail in life is that they aren't conscious, they don't pay attention. Yeah. Exactly. Here's, yeah. here's a fun exercise for those of you guys that are writing comments right now. If you look at my name where it says Woody Willard DE, I have all my clients put their drive in their name. So if you ever conduct team meetings, we have everyone's drive always front and center so we know exactly how to communicate to them. You know, as we, uh, you know, we were up at Bob's cabin, uh, what was that, a month ago now? Gosh, time it's all a blur. Right? It's all a blur. blur. Yesterday, a month ago, whatever it was. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, it was interesting as watching you kind of go dive dive deeply into the drive in one of your trainings. Um, I I wonder sometimes if I if mine switch back and forth. You know, I'm I'm my top two are executive and validator, but sometimes I feel more like a validator, and sometimes I feel more like an executive. So. Your drive, this is a great question. Your drive is created by drama and trauma. So I've this, uh, defined drama as a positive. So seeing your baby born, graduating high school, landing that first job, whatever it is, it's very dramatic, it's very positive. Traumatic, we understand. It's those really significant, hard, painful moments where the world's not giving you what you want and that creates your drive. So we all just went through COVID, right? And that's a lot of drama and trauma for a lot of people. So for 17 years, I was a director relator. Then I, you know, we sold everything to go travel the world, we get stuck in Florida. I can't have my relationships. I can't connect with anybody. I have a, fat, a mask on, I can't travel, I can't go anywhere. My drive shifted from director to executive, wanting proof, wanting to be able to win, have some sense of control, because during COVID I didn't. So there's no doubt your drive could be flipping and flopping, because you're uh, going through very specific moments right now, trying to land on where you set Environmental influence. Yep, absolutely. So uh, Harry's got a great question. What are some tricks 
uh, how to uncover someone's drive, such as steering questions. I'll give you three questions. In fact, I'll just pull it up for you. Give me one second. I like my cards. Yeah, the cards are awesome. You helped create those. All right, let me do a share screen again. And I love questions, guys. Please ask away. I'm a huge fan of questions. I grew up with a learning disability my entire life, and so I'm all about finding the information you need to feel successful. So how do you discover someone's drive? Couple ways. There are the drive cards, which Mitch has and maybe, maybe have, and um, right now you can't get those. Those are only through my clients, but we'll get those out in the future. There is this worksheet. I'll send this to Mitch. Mitch can email to all of you individually, and then you can share with people. We have people just take a screenshot of it, and text it to their friends, say, hey, tell me what your drive is. Then here's what's called the conversation close. Three questions you can ask. Other than work and family, what are you most passionate about? So other than work and family, what are you most passionate about? I never ask somebody, are you married? Uh, do you like work? What's your job? Because Gallup Hill found out that 70% of the people do not like their job. So if you ask, oh, what do you do for a living? Now they don't like you. 50% of all marriages end in divorce. So don't ask someone about if they're married or have kids because now they also don't like you. So the first question is, other than work and family, what are you most passionate about? Now, if they're like me and they're passionate about their work, they'll say their work. And now you have permission to talk to them about that. The next question is, when you don't get to it, then insert the passion, how does it impact you? I put this in red because what you're looking for is that negative drop. They need to say something to the fact that, oh, I feel miserable, I get depressed, I'm unhappy. If they don't say that, you don't have their passion. Third question, when you get to insert their passion, how does it make you feel? You're looking for, oh, I laid it on top of the world, I feel incredible, great. Their passion equals their drive. As soon as you understand what their passion is, whether it's to chase lifestyle, community, systems, admiration, or proof, now you know what their drive is. So great question. Love that question. Any other questions for yes? And guys, the time is yours. You're welcome to come off mute and uh, ask your questions if you'd like. You can ask them verbally or you can type them into the chat. But let's take advantage of Woody while he's here, right? Let's uh, let's get those questions asked. I know in situations like this, people never want to ask questions. They're too afraid to ask. <laughs> Let me tell you, I'm a high school dropout. I've failed my entire life. I'm a huge fan of fail fast, fail hard, ask questions, get the information you don't have. I'm here to serve you. Please go ahead and ask away. If I can put you on the spot for a second, what's like a, what's a an example of a time that you've applied this drive? Um, idea to a real estate transaction oh my gosh so many um fix and flips so when you are talking to a, a stressed out seller when someone's drive is being violated because they're losing their house they're going through divorce they uh miss payments they're very emotional and so when i'm doing a fix and flip or i'm doing a wholesale deal and i need to get that property i have to be very sensitive to their drive what they're going through for me, I share drive everywhere. Like if I'm gonna sit down and have a conversation with somebody, I wanna know their drive. Because to me, that's a cheat sheet. I now know how to serve them. It is not manipulation because you are giving them what they want. I've traveled the world many times. If I go to Spain and I'm trying to speak French to them, that's gonna violate the way they feel. But if I speak their language, they feel love. <clears throat> so when it comes to doing transactions, either discovering their drive through the conversation close, or actually laying out the cards, the handouts, say, hey, you're in a tough situation. You wanna get rid of your house. I wanna know what drives you. I wanna make sure we do this deal the way you wanna do it. When you present it that way, you have no problem communicating with them. As soon as you know their drive, you know exactly how to serve them to get the property the way you want. Uh, another thing I did as well is, if you guys remember the 1990s, uh, the Smashing Pumpkins. I sold the drummer one of my houses. This is during the 2005, 2006, we were in California at the time. It was in a gated community, beautiful home. I hadn't even moved in it. I bought it to flip it. 
and um, got a call from the, the realtor. He told me who he was, Jimmy's his name. And they say, hey, he wants this. And I, just by asking questions, I could learn what his drive was. I knew where he wanted to live. I knew why he wanted to live. And I literally <laughs> increased the price by 55 grand and he bought on the spot. And I never moved into the property. So once again, as soon as you know their drive, you know which way and how to sell them. Uh, Jasmine's got a question here. You said avoid marriage and work. What else are things to avoid? Really those two, that's it. Marriage and, and uh, work because so many people have such negative connotations with work and marriage that if they do or are in a happy marriage or happy work, they will bring it up and now you have permission. But I, I hate to do that. So my favorite question to ask people is, other than work and family, what are you passionate about? Or if you just wanna go straight to the passion, what's the number one project that you're doing right now that has you feeling on top of the world? And you will start conversations like you can't imagine. In fact, I'll, I'll, as you write in some more questions, I'll tell you this story. So in 2008, we were in California, we lost everything. We lost the house, foreclosure, lost the cars, everything. We came to Utah, I was starting from scratch and I ended up volunteering, sitting on the board of a charity. And this big player, this big guy came in, did a presentation, we're sitting in this green room, we're talking, and I just asked him flat out, his name was Dave, I said, Dave, so you know, what's the number one thing you're doing now that really has you passionate and just keeps you up at night? And he stopped, he's like, Woody, no one's ever asked me that. When I get off stage, they only wanna tell me about their life, they only wanna tell me about what I can do for them. So just the authenticity of having a real relationship. He invited me to his house, his multi-million dollar home. We started talking, we built a business relationship. It led to deals that he and I could both do together. So just having the consciousness of asking people authentic questions goes a really, really long way. I have a quick question. Yes. Um, how, when you apply drive, how does it benefit your team in the workspace? How does it bring everyone together and like accomplish more if it, if it does? Well, it totally does, Henry, good question. So everyone responds based off their drive. So there's three principles, I didn't go into them. I'll give you one principle. It's actually number three, subconsciously or consciously, you'll do anything within your belief system to defend and support your drive. So what that means is your hobbies, your habits, the way you show up at work, is based on defending and supporting your drive. So what we do is when you go into corporations or companies, we have all the teams identify their drive. We have them put up on their window in their office or like I'm doing right here, my name or my name has my drive next to it. So that when you go to present an idea to a team member, you know how to present to them. So if it's a relator, they're all about community. I'm not gonna go in there as an intellectual giving them stats and proof they could care less. How is this thing gonna serve them? If I'm talking to an intellectual, they want the system. They don't want to hear about the flowery fun, how it's going to help the community. No, they just want the system. So with teams, it's huge. Are there drives that tend to work well together? So let me go back to do a screen share real quick. First of all, any drive can get along with any other drive. What matters most is how they validate that drive, whether they're doing it internally, so they're internally motivated, or they're doing it externally, they're looking to other people, places, or things. If you're internally motivated, you're confident, you're strong, you'll voice your opinion without offending people. If you're externally motivated, and this is a whole different seminar, different speech, but if you're externally motivated, you're only caring about other people. You're looking to get validation, acceptance, recognition from other people. That becomes very toxic. But if you look at similarities, directors and executives are very similar. They're about lifestyle and proof. Relators and validators are very similar, community and admiration, and intellectuals are independent. And if I were to pull up a different slide, the actual numbers from the Shark Tank, the two sharks that are directors and executives have done the most deals together. The relators and validators have done the most deals together. And the intellectuals, which was Damon John, did the least amount of deals with anyone else. But anybody can get along with any other drive as long as they're internally motivated. Uh, another funny uh, story, when, uh, so 2019, 
Yeah, 19. We decided to sell everything we own to travel the world. And in our family, there's five people. So myself, my wife, and our three kids. Five, uh, four of us are directors. So we're all about lifestyle. The fifth one is a relator. So the four of us left this one. He was old enough. He's on his own. And then we went to go travel the world, got trapped in Florida with COVID. But he had all of his relationships here in Utah. He didn't want to leave. Even with the opportunity to travel the world, he could care less. He wanted to be with his friends. So kind of Henry, back to your question with teams, you have to make sure that you're speaking the team's language to incentivize them to take action in whichever direction you want them to go. Love the questions, guys. Thank you so much. You can unmute and ask another one if you want. So uh, you said to avoid like marriage and family. What if they actually did say, oh, it's marriage and I mean, one of the two. I apologize, you cut out. Can you say that one more time? Uh, so you said to like avoid when asking for, I mean, like asking their passions and they're avoiding, I mean, avoiding the marriage and family. And what if they did brought up one of the two? That's great. Yeah. So if they bring it up, like if you ask me other than work and family, what are you passionate about? I'm going to bring up work. So, and I would bring up my family, but I'm very passionate about my work. As soon as they bring up work or family, you now know you're free to talk to them about that. Because if they're a relator, they're going to say, oh no, my family's everything. I love them. Great. Now you can talk to them about their family. So the only reason why I avoid that up front is I don't want to offend and I don't want to hurt anyone. And if they're going through something bad at work or the relationship, I don't want to bring that into the conversation. Also, I've found that those tend to be kind of default answers too, right? Like, what are you most passionate yeah, about? Oh, my, my family, right? It doesn't matter what their drive is and that can convolute the message. So, yeah, but if I, you I, say, I, if you say specifically like, other than work and family, what is it? And you're like, well, it is, actually is my family. All right, you're a relator. <laughs> yeah. And it makes them think too, because there's, in Western society, we think we're supposed to say family. So, it's important that you take that off the equation and go deep into what their passion really is. Okay. I well, have a question. Yeah, go ahead. So I thought I was a relator, but something you just said didn't quite resonate with me about your family member that didn't want to go on the trip because all their family was here or their relationships. Yeah. Did, I guess I don't know what my question is other than, is it possible you're still a relator even though you don't fit all the right. um, penances maybe? Yeah, so my son was 18 years old at the time and if you have 18 year olds, or if you remember being 18 year old, years old, your family isn't your community. That's not the ones you want to hang out with usually. So he just graduated high school. He had all of his friends to him. That was his community. So relators aren't just family. It is so much deeper than that. In fact, let me pull this back up. And when we're looking at the individual drive, one second, find the slide right well, you're pulling that up, Denise. I'm curious. So, if that if you were in those shoes, because if that's what kind of made you question your 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 drive, what would you do? Would you stay with and hang out with friends or family, or would you would you go travel the world if that was your option? Well, I would go travel the world even if I like had to go by myself. So, what's your second one? What was the second one? <laughs> so, so I'm you're doubting. director. <laughs> you're director. <laughs> <laughs> so Denise, on your so the first one might have been the R. What was your second one that you chose? D. D for director. Okay, <laughs> yeah, you nailed it. Yeah. So I, I wasn't going to go into this. This gets deeper and deeper. But if you look at your drive, and if you look at my name, I only have two. I don't list all five. Your primary one is the first one. That is the car. So think of a car. That's the direction you're heading. The gas is the secondary drive. So I'm what's called the director executive. So the way that I get my car to move, I get my director lifestyle I want is through executive, through winning control, work goals, providing things like that. So for you, you're a relator director. So you actually get your relationships through experiencing life, life's freedom, creativity, performing and overcoming, correct? 
Yes. Yeah, so for you, you absolutely would have gone. My son was a uh, relator intellectual. So traveling okay. made no sense to them. There was no system, especially the way that we do it. We do it very spontaneously. We fly to a country, we don't have a hotel, we pick it up when we get there. We just live very, very spontaneously. Yeah, that's what I do too. Yeah, and it drives him insane. So when you're looking at the individual drive, you don't have to have all seven met. It's whichever card has the most amount of keywords that makes you feel important. So I would definitely say you're still a relator director. So you have a primary and then a secondary. Correct, correct. Thank you. You're welcome. I've also found, and I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong here, Woody, but the ones that are further down the list for me in my drive, like the last two, are the ones that I have usually the hardest time connecting with, right? Not necessarily that I don't like those people or or whatnot, but just a harder time communicating, a harder time like connecting because I have the least amount of empathy for their drive. And that's that's normal because they're the furthest away from you. Another way to think about it is like an upside down T. So the top two are your primary and your secondary. The bottom three are situational and environmental. So I am an intellectual, I'm a relator, and I'm a validator. So drive is very complex. There's, I mean, seeing tons of PowerPoint slides, you think, oh, an intellectual would have to create that system. No, I am a director executive, but I do use the bottom in certain environments and situations, but they don't make me feel important. They don't move the needle for me. The primary and secondary do. I got a second question. Love it. So let's say you're in a deal, right? You're closing someone, you're pitching someone something. So you have a short period of time to really understand them. And drive is made of a, a whole bunch of different factors, right? So the most like the most important parts is like what they're motivated from and like what it comes down to as their characteristic and like what they value. So in that short period of time where you get to know a person and really move on to that next stage with them, would you say you focus on what their motivational factors are, who they are as a person, or maybe something else, which I didn't mention? No, you're right on. So um, back in 2000 to 2007, I had a mortgage and real estate firm in seven states. We did over $100 million in real estate transactions. And there were tons of times we'd get the table and a deal was gonna fall through, or someone was gonna back out, or the appraisal didn't come in, and so now we had to restructure. So we were always negotiating emotions. I mean, when it comes to real estate, all you're really doing is managing emotion. That's all real estate is with a lot of zeros behind it. So I'm always driven to understand what drives the person across the table from me. Whether I'm doing drive or I'm asking key questions, if they back out, if they want more money, I just go straight to the point, why? What's the thing you're really looking for? Ask three whys, just follow the why, 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 in a, in a kind way, not in an aggressive way. Like, why are you doing this? Like, Hey, if I can understand more, what's your motive behind this decision? Just so I can make sure we have a win-win. If you present it that way, people tell you everything. And it really does work. I mean, I've, I've used Drive now for years, Woody, since, you know, you and I first had our, your, our first conversations when it was on, kind of on the drawing board for you. Um, yep. I mean, it, it, it's awesome when you, finding connections with people and, and you said one thing in the in the drive book um, that you you know you kind of only connect with twenty percent of people. Well, that's the eighty twenty principle, right? Uh, a, a mediocre to good salesman is gonna gonna or, or negotiator, real estate negotiator, the same thing, um, is going to only close twenty percent of their deals, right? Um, that's that's good batting average. Um, yeah. But a great batting average is when you can actually tap into the other types of personalities and and close those deals based on understanding who they are, right? And providing value to them. Because really as real estate investors, we're just problem solvers, right? And a lot of times the problems are internal to the person we're negotiating with. Correct. The other day I heard a quote by Elon Musk that if you want to be good in business, you need to understand human behavior. And I thought that was the most, I wish I would have put that in my book. Like, I'm like, that's exactly it. When you understand humans, you're great in business. And so there's a couple of questions here, you know, restate the question you asked at the beginning when you're looking at cards um, and do a screen share. It's, the question is literally on the left-hand side. It's the black box. So read each card, rate, rank the drive based on the card that makes you feel important, not what's important to you. 
So that's really the way to do it. And I know there's some other questions on how do you learn more about Drive? Is there a website? There's not a website. We're redoing, um, let me see here, one second, something just froze up. There we go. Uh, we're redoing everything based on AI. So I'm not gonna go into it, but we're doing a whole Drive AI website. But there is a book. Um, and Mitch is in that book. So you can go onto Amazon, just type in right. Drive, Sell, Woodwork, and you'll get it right there. And uh, it's because I have a massive learning disability, there's over 157 pictures in the book. It's colored. I love it because I want to be able to <laughs> flip through and remember where it was. So I don't have a coloring book in there, but all the pictures are in color. So yeah, you can literally just get that straight on Amazon and it'll get right to you. So. But I appreciate it. I'm going to wrap it up now. Unless there's any other questions we have, we'll go from there. Woody, I'm, I'm going to ask you one parting question, and then we'll yes. uh, and then we'll wrap it up. So this is the first opportunity that we've had to have a Renatus instructor on on Mitch and Maley Live. Um, and so I want to I want to kind of understand, you know, what what was it? Because I know Renatus instructors, you know, it's not being a Renatus instructor that makes them millionaires, right? <laughs> right. It's it's the business that they do. Um, you know, they get paid well and Bob's generous, but, but what is it that, uh, that, that kind of made you gravitate to that? To drive or to the instructor? To, to, to linking arms with Renatus and becoming a Renatus instructor. Oh my gosh. Okay. So, and I will say this very, very freely that I am not connected to Renatus. I am independent from Renatus. So I can say this without any, any, um, <laughs> prejudice, if I can put it that way. I I do speak around the world. I've spoken in Dubai, Germany. That was all this year, Spain. I'm, I'm, I'm always on the road. I will put, and you can record this and share this with any of my other customers. I will it's being broadcast live on YouTube, buddy. Broadcast <laughs> live. I will say this recorded. Of all the companies I speak for, and I mean, this is going to cost me a lot of money in the future. Of all the companies I speak for, there is not a better one than Renatus. And here's, here's a couple reasons why. Why? because it teaches true, correct principles in real estate. Why do I know that? Because I've done $100 million of real estate transactions. So when I came across it and I got the education and I looked at it, I'm like, this stuff's genius. Like what it took me to learn how to do $100 million in transactions, Renata's teaches in classes I would have given any amount of money for. The other thing is the community, the people, you, the relationships, the owner, Bob Snyder, he truly is my best friend. Bob Snyder is, he and I were in Germany together speaking. Love that man. It's the rest of the community, the way that people show up, they validate each other, the systems that are in place, and truly being able to win, connect, make more money, have fun. I'm, I'm all in on Renatus, I love it. And I'm independent from it. They don't pay me to say it. I'm independent, but I freaking love it. Thank you. That's awesome. I, I couldn't agree more. I, uh, you know, I, I'm celebrating 10 years in October of being nice. a student. That's awesome, and, man. Uh, I have I have had nothing but incredible success. Um, well, that's not true. We all have obstacles in the way. We got mountains we gotta climb, right? But but yeah. um, um, you know, I I thank goodness for my education. Because I wouldn't know how to climb those mountains otherwise, right? It's it's right? my roadmap. So um, Woody, I love you, man. Uh, I mean love you, brother. I love that that you know we can it's we're one of, we've got that type of friendship where we can spend years apart and it's like you know, we get together and it's like no time's passed at all. And the things we've right. done together, we've traveled the country together. We've, we've done some, we've driven fast cars. I mean, you, uh, you know, well, almost, all the we things. We almost got thrown into jail one day. <laughs> we almost got thrown like, into jail. Yeah, that happened. <laughs> yep. For going almost 200 miles an hour up uh, I-80. Yeah, that's. Uh, yeah, that was uh, bad. That was bad. Um, but Woody, thank you so much for being on, my friend. So grateful. Guys, thank you for being here. I hope you got as much value out of this as I did. Absolutely incredible content from Woody Woodward. Uh, if you do have your Renatus education, Woody, Woody's classes are found in Profits. He's got three drive classes in Profits. You are gonna wanna go check those out immediately because they are absolutely awesome. So the value that you got today in an hour, there's what? Uh, there's 18 hours eight, in the 18 Profits. Hours? <laughs> yeah, there's yeah. 18 hours on drive in Profits. So um, you guys are definitely gonna wanna check that out. Thank you so much for being here. We're going to be back next week. We're here every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Mountain Time. So mark your calendars. Put it on repeat. You're not going to want to miss it. I love you all. Stay happy. Stay healthy. Stay hungry to go out and do some real estate. And we'll see you next week. Thanks, guys. Take care. Take care, guys.